So now that we've got our cutting ready, we're gonna do a dip. And actually we'll do some water in this. Dip it in water. Dip it in the root hormone. Hey guys, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi you guys, happy Sunday to you. And it's day 160 of the Quarantine Gardeners. Oh my gosh. And apparently it's blue day. Blue day. Wear blue. Wear blue. If you don't know, we're the Quarantine Gardeners and this is our daily video log of us accomplishing different projects around our garden while we're under quarantine. And we're so thankful you're here today, you guys, on Science Sunday. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you have, thank you for subscribing and following along with our daily journey. Hope it's a bit inspiring to you and you're having a little bit of fun along the way like we are. Yep. And learning a few things there too. So guys, today is Science Sunday and it's we're up. taking cuttings of our hydrangea plants to make more of them. You know, if you've never caught one of our science Sundays, this is a day for us just to goof off and experiment in our garden. And often we take lots of cuttings and propagate different plants. Um, we've run experiments on soil drainage and different things. So yeah, we love propagating new plants. Yep, we get to nerd out. You we get to totally nerd out with nerd us. Out. And it, you know, this is a little bit controversial today because most experts would recommend taking hydrangea cuttings earlier in the summer or even late spring. More yep. of a softwood cutting, right? Yep, more of an early early growth type of cutting in the year. So we're kind of going against the grain. It's a little controversial maybe, but uh, we're gonna try it anyway we're because- try it. why not? Why not? We're here anyway. We might as well try it out and see if we can produce more plants. We've got our root hormone ready to go. We're gonna show you the hydrangea we're taking cuttings of, and we're gonna try three different growth mediums to see what happens. Yep, so we'll show you all that in just a minute. This is our beautiful hydrangea in the front yard. We just love this plant. You can tell it's a little bit spent now. It's been in bloom for maybe about a month. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, maybe. It, it probably started blooming around mid-June, maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit after that. And it's just, these blooms have just been continuous the oh. whole summer. It's been beautiful. We just love it. And you know what, you guys, this started out as a two gallon pot that we planted, what, probably two years ago? About two years ago. And it is just exploded. Yep. It loves its home. It really likes its spot right here. We wish we could have showed you when our clematis was in bloom right here, because the clematis was about the same color as the hydrangea. So yeah. it was just this explosion of this purple color over it's here, it's so pretty. Blue. Yep. So guys, you can see by looking at the plant here, those blooms get a little weighty as they get bigger and a little bit older in age. And they're making the plant kind of bow down, kind of stretch down and it's falling over in places. So today we're gonna be taking our cuttings from this plant. We're gonna keep in mind that we're also gonna try and shape this plant a little bit as we prune. So some of this ranginess and droopiness comes away from that. So that'll be part of our mindset as we're taking these cuttings yeah, today. And that's such a win-win because we're going to try, we're going to take nine cuttings today and we'll show you how we're going to grow them or attempt to root them in a minute. But that's going to help us shape the plant and grow new plants. Yep. And that's a win-win. So guys, we're going to take our cuttings from this plant today and we're going to take the cuttings from the non-flowering tissue. Now, we don't want to take it from the flowering tissue because what's going on here is that it's still flowering, the plant's still going through its flowering stage, obviously. We want to enjoy these. Plus, we'd have to take these off to get these, uh, this plant tissue to root. There's some general plant propagation theory that happens to say that if you have flowering tissue and you take uh, cuttings from that flowering tissue, um, it might take a little bit longer to root. And that's in general, it's not hydrangea specific, but these are just things that you need to think about because the plant's in flowering mode in this tissue, it's not in growth mode. If you take stem cuttings from this tissue, the plant does kind of have to kick back over into vegetative growth instead of flowering growth. So we don't want to go down that road, we want to make it really easy for all the cuttings to actually root. Therefore, we're going to take these cuttings. We're going to take tissue from here. So we're going to find nine different pieces to take cuttings from today from this plant without flowers. Okay, let's get started. So How are we, what's the plan? Let's do this. Okay, so we've got our hand pruners, our Corona hand pruners. We're gonna use these to take the cuttings. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take at least two, maybe three nodes worth of this tissue. And what I mean by a node is, is I mean where you see these leaves right here coming out, these little stems for these leaves on this stem. This is a node. This is what they call a plant node. We're gonna take at least two of these. So for these cuttings, we wanna take enough stem and node to be able to put the hormone on and to get it to root. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna at least take this top side. We're gonna cut basically just below this node because what I'm thinking is, is I want us to have this node and this node, possibly with root hormone on those after we 
remove these leaves and stick the stem treated with root hormone into the soil. And then also the non-treated uh, stems, put it in soil. We want these two nodes exposed. So I wanna cut just below this, but I'm gonna cut down here because I don't wanna leave an exposed stem, all of this left over, it's gonna look bad. So what I'll do is, is first, I'll, first I'll cut here. So there's that. So we'll wait to recut this when we're ready to actually do the cuttings and treat the cuttings before planting them in the soil. So this is what we're gonna take today. So guys, here we are, we're out in the backyard now. We've got our root hormone that we're gonna use. Here's our three treatments we have here today. We're gonna do the square soil treatment with no rooting hormone. The rounded pots will have a root treatment, will have the rooting hormone treatment. And then we're gonna have a third, of course, like we usually do for all our cuttings, we'll have a water treatment with yeah. no rooting hormone. And all of, we use the same potting soil in all of these containers, so that's a controlled variable. Yep, espoma. Uh, potting mix. Mm -hmm. So guys, I'm going to use again our, our hand pruners. I'm going to do a treatment and remove these leaves off these stems and I'm going to cut down here to remove this extra stem that we don't need. So here we go. So now that we've got our cutting ready, we're going to do a dip and actually we'll do some water in this, dip it in water, dip it in the root hormone. And here we go, guys. Cool. That's, that's our first cutting. That's great. We'll set that over there. Now we're just gonna continue with this. And this one you can see, it's got an actual, another stem growing off of it. I'm gonna clip that off because we don't want that on there. Not for our cuttings anyway. I'm gonna remove these leaves and we'll cut this extra stem off. Cut these guys off too. And then we'll do a, a dip, a dip, and then a stick. So we are done and these have all been planted just in potting soil, no extra special root hormone. These guys, the round containers are all in potting soil and rooting hormone. And these three cuttings are just water. So Sean, what are you thinking? What Pretty exciting guys. Yeah, I know. I, I think the rooting hormone is going to be uh, the first cuttings to root. Yep. These guys. Yeah. And then I'd say the water and then I'll say the no root hormone treatment in the soil. What about you? I actually have the exact same prediction. I really think that, especially with the type of cuttings we took, that we're gonna need rooting hormone to get these, these to root. I think these will root as well. So I do think that the we'll get a couple, couple of them to root hopefully in the water and hopefully there's a couple in here. Yep. It'll be really exciting to see what happens, but over and above everything else, uh, with all the treatments. I hope we have nine new hydrangea oh plants. Oh my gosh, we won't even know where to put them all, but mm -hmm. that'll be fun. <laughs> um, so we need to check these probably in four weeks, and then we'll probably check again maybe closer to six or seven weeks. Yeah, yeah I would predict that three to four weeks until they start to rip because they are semi-hardwood cuttings. We're doing it off season. We're doing it a little bit later than what the literature says that we uh, that we looked at. Guys, just to let you know, and we'll put the links down below if you want to check the literature and have these books on reference for yourself. If you're doing any cuttings yourself, we use uh, one of the books was Michael Durr and it's his uh, landscape uh, shrubs and trees book. There's a, there's a section in each one of the write-ups for each species of plant that he covers, how to propagate it. And he gives specific instructions on how to do that. It's a pretty cool book. And the other one is called Hartman et al, H-A-R-T-M-A-N-N. -N. And there's a couple other authors after that. And that's a blue book. 
the Dur book is a green book. And again, we'll have the links down below to Amazon if you want to check those out and use those yourselves. Great references. So we hope that was fun and helpful for you to watch. We can't wait to see what roots and we'll check, like we said, it probably in about three or four weeks and we'll give you an update on YouTube as well. Can't wait to see the results, guys. And if any of you are new to gardening this year because of COVID, you've been home, you're experimenting and trying new things in your garden, you might be wondering what you need to do this upcoming fall and winter with all your beautiful new plants. You don't want them to die over the winter we have a course coming up. We're going to be releasing it later next month. It's all about fall garden tasks and what you're going to need to do. Guys, we want to help you through this process of learning what to do in the fall. And we'll go step by step through the whole process and prioritize what you need to do, when you need to do it, to protect your plants in the fall to get them ready for the winter time. And we're talking, we're going to help you with bulb planting. We're going to help you with getting mulch ordered and ready and spread in your yard. Pruning, that's something you might not have thought about. Stay tuned and keep checking back on our website spokengarden.com we're going to have a wait list up in the next week yeah go to spokengarden.com and click on the button to go to the wait list page and just sign up and then you'll be in the queue and we'll be getting back to you real fast so guys leave your comments and questions down below for us we love hearing from you guys you always have great comments and questions give us that thumbs up let us know we're doing a good job and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. And that's a wrap for today's Science Sunday. So we'll be back tomorrow with Mulching Monday. We'll have another new tip for you about mulch or mulching or something related to mulching. So come on back to see what we're up to, you guys, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.